Mr. Martini the map again. I think he's got us lost again because we're kind of aimlessly walking in the forest. <laughs> Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss a minute of Colorado Martini. So coming to the Pecos ruins, you can get some spectacular pictures. I was here in the winter time and with the snow-capped mountains in the background, oh, I cannot wait to put these pictures together. So I highly recommend that you come and see these ruins. There's a lot of history here and a lot of people don't realize how old the settlements in this area are. They date back to the 1600s. Even the Spaniards were here even earlier than that. In the high altitude of northern New Mexico, not far from Santa Fe or Las Vegas, New Mexico, you will find the remains of a Native American Pueblos and their churches. In the mid 1100s, the Pueblo Indians of New Mexico began to live in multi-family housing called Pueblos. By 1450, the Pecos Pueblo became a thriving settlement. But by the 1500s, the Pecos Pueblo and other Pueblos in the Southwest became an attractive target for the Spanish conquistadors. In the 1600s, the Spanish began to establish a colony and Franciscan missions across the area. Spanish rule attempted to govern and control all the Pueblo settlements. But due to poor treatment, many Pueblos band together to create what is basically the first American Revolution. The Pueblo Revolt of 1680 sought to expel the Spanish government and Franciscan friars from the Southwest. The successful revolt represented the only time that European invaders were successfully expelled from the country. But sadly, in 1692, the Spanish reclaimed New Mexico, and they had little resistance from the Pecos Pueblo because of raids by Comanches from the plains, the disease that Europeans had introduced and spread throughout the Pueblo community and the theft of Pueblo land. The Pecos people slowly declined throughout the 1700s. So make sure when you come here that you go to start the trail at the visitor center and you pick up these laminated cards that tell you about the area and the different spots. So each spot is numbered and then the cards have an explanation of what it is. So make sure you pick that up at the ranger's um, desk. Um, so there's two roads. You can either go further up and totally surpass the visitor center or come to the visitor center. So definitely make the visitor center your stop. And this place. So your park pass, if you've got a, a national park pass, will work here. Just had some um, snow here. Um, in the Santa Fe, Las Vegas area. And so um, the trail's just beautiful this time of year. So what's really nice about this trail is that you can bring your pets as long as they're on a leash. So basically what we're gonna do is take about a mile trail around the ruins um, and they're probably gonna be beautiful with the fresh snow on them. Also remember, you are in altitude, so make sure you drink plenty of water and that you give your pets plenty of water. 
that will help prevent the altitude sickness because you are at 7,000 plus feet in this area. So the trail is pretty flat. Uh, you could probably get a wheelchair back here, but the time of year that we're here, it's kind of muddy um, and can be icy. So do be careful if you're here in the winter time. So the whole area around Santa Fe and um, Las Vegas, you'll see these pines and these are pinyon pines. You can also buy the nuts um, in a lot of the stores. And they're quite good. I used to put them in a uh, pesto. Mr. Martini just said, they're small, but location, location, location. Look at this view. There's the Kiva. These ruins are just amazing. You can still see the doorways. So these walls right here was a church foundation that was built in 1625 and then these walls here were built in 1717 so the ruins you see are from two churches that were built a hundred years apart so these churches that you see um, in front of you um, is part of Pecos and it was one of the largest and most powerful Pueblos um, in northern New Mexico. So when the um, Spaniards um, established a mission here, um, a few years later in 1625 the first church was completed. Um, you can see the remnants of the foundation in front of us here, right over here. Um, and then the arrival of the Spanish brought a lot of change to the Pecos people. So the Pecos people were um, the Pueblo Native American people that lived here. And then the Spanish came in and established a mission. So Mr. Martini was saying that you would basically build um, an adobe rock wall. Or no, that's not adobe, that's regular rock. Okay, so you build a rock wall and then you cover it with the adobe plaster. Although this is adobe right here. It's usually mud and hay. Yeah, it's mud and hay and gravel. Horse shit. <laughs> Horse shit. <laughs> so you can actually go up into the church, which is pretty cool. The views are just the views are just spectacular up here. There's the village. So posts used to go in these and this was a shaded area where you could um, tie up your horse. Mr. Martini, the map again. I think he's got us lost again because we're kind of aimlessly walking in the forest civilization <laughs> Civil, back to civilization no way. <laughs> Fox said I had it the whole time Spock now. were you leading us the whole time thank god for Spock <laughs> it's 
good thing you peed the whole way, Spock. In 1821, Mexico won its independence from Spain, and soon after, the legendary Santa Fe Trail began. The trail was filled with merchants, settlers, and travelers going to Santa Fe. These travelers would pass right by the remnants of the Pecos Pueblo. In the 1830s, the last remaining Pecos people migrated permanently to another Pueblo, and their traditions lived on there. But during the Mexican-American War in 1846, New Mexico officially became a United States territory. Since that time, a ranch in the area was built called Fork Lightning Ranch. And in the 1940s, Buddy Folkelson purchased the ranch. And in 1949, Buddy married the famous Hollywood actress, Greer Garson. And upon their death, the property was given to the Pecos National Monument which transformed it into the Pecos National Historic Park it is today. Right behind me is Fort Lightning Ranch. All this property all around me was donated by the famous actress Greer Garson. And this behind me is the old trading post because right in front of me was the Santa Fe Trail. So the area is closed right now. Unfortunately, um, we weren't able to get on the property this time around. But I believe if you go up the road here, here's the trading post right here, is the ranch house that they used to live in. So rumor has it that when they built this trading post, that they took the timbers from the old church um, at the uh, Pecos Pueblo, um, but that's never been instantiated, so I don't know if that's true or not. Um, but that's been a rumor for a very long time. The original trading post was built in 1858. It served as a trading post and a way station along the Santa Fe Trail. It later became a stagecoach stop, a hostel, and a tavern. Union soldiers used the property as a camp during the Civil War, and during the Battle of Glorieta, it became a hospital. So all this right here was once the Santa Fe Trail, and here's the Fork Lightning Ranch, and if you go off in that direction, just a couple of miles is the Pecos Pueblo, um, and the big gates are on the left, so all this property around us was donated by Greer Carson and her husband. We have some great suggestions on some books on this subject down in our description of this video, or you can go to our blog at coloradomartinis.com, and that's martinis with an S. Make sure to check out all our videos on traveling in New Mexico. It is truly an enchanted place. Make sure to check out the links in the description. They help support this channel. And thank you so much for coming by. You have no idea how much we appreciate it.